he looked at me and he was like, you know, that feeling you're feeling right now? I was like, yes. And he said, train hard so you don't ever have to feel that one again. And I said, yes, sir. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Man, I was looking at um, your record, man. And you debuted in 2011 13 years man in the game man what can you say like if if a young fighter is watching right now this interview what can you tell them man how the game has changed throughout the years it's uh advanced the game's drastically advanced there's more techniques there's more bodies there's more people involved with mma uh coaches and the advice going forward, if you're just getting, uh, you know, if you're green in the game, get around the guys that really know their shit that, uh, you know, a lot of people now can throw stuff out on online. It'll pass the eye test and uh, not necessarily help you win a world title, even on a regional level. So make sure that, you know, you pick guys that, you know, are really about this life, know the ins and outs of the game and uh, are going to help you accomplish your goals, whatever that is to a fighter. That's what I would say to him. And then, and on top of that, uh, get you a good doctor just because injuries happen. So, uh, you know, break them off some, get a good chiropractor and take care of your body all the way to the end. How have you stayed healthy throughout the years, man? We've seen guys come in, especially uh, from that era and, and not last as long as you have. Um, nutrition. I chalk it up to my nutrition and uh, man, no steroids. So I kind of like, I pride myself on, you know, my body being pure, natural, and, you know, just like any other man, you know, uh, fuck good, eat good, sleep good, you know, all the way to the end. All right, there you go. July 15th, man, you're you're back in action. You're making your second appearance in that octagon. You'll be facing Alex Munoz. How do you feel about uh, him and in, in, in the matchup? I feel amazing about him and being in the matchup. You know, I'm excited to throw knuckles with this man, and I'm better than I've ever been. July 15th, I cannot wait to show to my team and uh, the people that believe in me, the supporters and the haters, you know, the next Carl Deet moving forward. Definitely. And, you know, Munoz, he's been out for more than two years now. Do you do you believe in ring rust? Sometimes. And I really don't. I mean, at 6-2 and two right now, maybe so. I do believe in it like that. You know, not when you're like Dominic Cruz, though, you know, when you have that much experience in title fights and the highest level. So with this fight, definitely, you know, he's he's going to show up and try and do his best. I'm going to capitalize and put him away. And that's going to be the rest. The what was the longest gap between fights for you? Uh, I'd say over a year. Well, COVID too. whatever COVID was, I wasn't in the UFC yet. So uh, I believe with everybody in the world, we just shut down. So mm -hmm. fight. even uh, even in boxing, I couldn't even compete in boxing. How did you handle that that time away when you actually got back into the into the cage or the ring? You know, what I mean, did you did you feel it a little bit in the opening rounds? No, I stayed training the whole time. I uh, knew that I was going to break within the next, you know, whatsoever. So. I was uh, bailing hay in the morning with the farmers, and I was training at night, and then I was getting up in the morning every now and then and just hitting a run just before I went and bailed hay. So bailing hay, man, that's interesting. You know, not many people talk about that as a, a good base for MMA, but we've seen, like, guys like Matt Hughes, right? People talk about Matt Hughes, how strong he is from his work on the farm. Is it? It's different, right? Like, you wake up in the morning, like, early in the morning, and you're working all day, and then you actually, after that, you go train. That's crazy. Yeah, you can ask the farmers about me. I was doing it all in sweats, you know. And I got to take breaks sometimes, you know, to, you know, redo the chew or the, the cigarette, you know, relax. I'm just take a water break. And, uh, man, you guys I take a break. I'll handle it from here until you guys get back. Let's uh, rewind to your UFC debut, man. It was, it was on short notice. So on top of being short notice, you know, there's so many other elements that I think fans don't realize what comes with, you know, taking a fight with the UFC, especially your debut that's not even fight related. How was that roller coaster just leading up to the, the point of entering the cage? I loved it. I really didn't think I was going to lose, bro. You know, and then the second round, I remember looking at the clock and uh, when he, he, he had the choke in with between 10 seconds, you know, I was hand fighting, hand fighting the first hard, hand fighting the second. 
and within the matter of fucking eight seconds, you know, that fight was over, you know. Kudos to the, you know, Joe Selecki on that night. And now I know, you know, a little bit more, you know, what to do, you know, hand fighting. And then we go into the third and, you know, we'll see, right? But it doesn't matter because it didn't happen. But, you know, at this point, you know, I would say hand fight, eight more seconds, and we go into the third. My legs are good. I felt his legs just tight, though. He was tight the whole time. So you look at how that body responds in the third when you're grappling hard and like a snake, you know. So, you know, hats off to Joe. That, uh, that was a good uh, debut. That was a good showing for, you know, just for what it was. And I'm excited to show, you know, how much better, you know, I am light years ahead of this man. Yeah, Joe Selecki, man, he's a he's a solid prospect. You know, when you evaluate the performance up to that point, up to the, you know, the end of the fight, what what did you see? Some positives from that experience. Yeah. Carl Deaton was showcasing uh, the world that his submission defense is one of the best in the world until the last eight seconds before the third round. Up until then, you know, it was uh, he was just fighting on the back. It wasn't like he had anything close, but we were fighting right there and hand fighting. He stayed in tight mm-hmm. position with the body triangle. Even in the first round, he was standing on the feet. And uh, that was a good submission defense right there. If you listen to the fight and the commentators, Cruz had said about that and Bisbing, they were, uh, he went, oh, this fight's done, this fight's done. Four, four minutes into it, yeah, uh, Carl Deaton's pretty damn tough. He knows what he's doing right there. I'm excited. You know, let's see what's going to happen. E- exactly, you know. I'm excited. I just need to get out of those little motions, little movements right there and, uh, you know, make it happen. So that's, that's my next uh, – that was what I've gotten better on. For sure. And, you know, you're returning to the Apex. How was it fighting in the Apex? It's just a different environment overall. Definitely a different environment. It's man, it's nice though, you know. That cage, the canvas, the the professionalism, the whole the everybody, you know, it's the highest level in fighting. It's uh extremely nice, man. I'm uh I'm very fortunate to be a part of it. And, you know, that was one of my goals when I started this journey. You're talking about being eleven years and this, that, you know, deep in the game. So I mean, yeah, it feels good, bro. I could we could be doing this anywhere in the world, you know. For sure. How did you de- decompress after that fight? Went down and played at the the table at the hotel I was up at, and just relaxed. You know, I really didn't think I was gonna lose, so I wasn't trying to think too much about it. And then when it set in, uh, I seen Rashad Evans in the uh, in the walkway, and he looked at me and he was like, "You know that feeling you're feeling right now?" I was like, "Yes." And he said, "Train hard so you don't ever have to feel that one again." And I said, "Yes, sir." You know, thank you, which and so we're here today and i'm excited been training hard my body's the best it's ever been and uh i actually got a uh, coach greg nelson one of the best it's ever been so july 15th you're gonna see it for sure and you know before you got into the training camp with greg nelson was there anything in particular that you worked on you know made any skill set or did you work with somebody outside your inner circle to to improve upon what you have already you're right Yep, in, uh, in my hometown, one of my first boxing coaches, Thomas Chamberlain, uh, fighting chance boxing, what he did in the game and what he knows still to this day. Um, I'm excited to have that little bit of knowledge lift through me. My hands are dedicated to, uh, you know, Thomas Chamberlain and the whole Chamberlain aspect, you know, and the SAG chip reservation back in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. That is the base of my hands. And uh, every time I get to go home, I get to do a uh, strength and conditioning gym just to stay in shape, a little bit of wrestling around the areas. It's Midwest, but uh, definitely the boxing and the hands. And then I bring it back into camp. So I'm always trying to work my hands. You know, I'm, I feel like, uh, cause I started out wrestling. Now that I have these things under me, um, man, it's a whole different animal in there. You know, I'm it's takedowns are when I want and not, I got to get, you know, knockouts are there and not, you know, it's just a different type of, uh, you know, beast I'm bringing in there. Yeah, Minnesota, Michigan. That's that's an area known for for their wrestling, for their boxing. It's it's, it's a good combination. Man, you got Crump Boxing in Michigan. Some you got Chuck's Boxing Gym in St. John's, Michigan. Chuck the Sanders, best. You got Minnesota Boxing. You know, I'm just getting into the area, but some of these guys around here are you know solid been on the leagues you've been in the you know on these high, high level shows and uh yeah i'm uh i'm excited to even expand my knowledge with these guys you know boxing's good wrestling's good midwest tough so you know we gotta have good boots and long johns for the winners 
arguably the greatest boxer of all time comes from the the area you got you're from. So you know what he, I mean. It says something. Right, he did, didn't he? Grand Rapids. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, how has it been, man, being back? Because I believe, like, you know, you had maybe, I don't know if the last camp or the few camps you were, like, you were outside of Minnesota doing your camps, doing your training. How has it been, you know, being back in your in the area of Minnesota? Good. Just, uh, man, get back to the roots, if that's what you mean. Re, uh, yeah. re this, uh, I call it sharpening the knife, sharpening the blade, you know, but just back to the roots and getting back to, you know, what makes Carl Deaton, Carl Deaton. And July 15th, I'm going to fuck this dude up. <laughs> who's been, who's been in the, who's been grinding with you in the training room? Everybody's in uh, the training room. You got Russ, you got Greco guys. You got, you got Johnny Castaneda. He just came off a win. You got guys fighting oh, man. Um, in Minnesota, man. You got boxers all over. You got Mike Richmond, BF. Mm -hmm. Bare knuckle champ, and soon to be another bare knuckle champ. You got the grappling too, and it's most of these guys are under Greg Nelson. Mm -hmm. And on top of being the fundamentals, their games are just quick and their specialties that they produce. You know, so you're in the training room, and you know you're going with a lot of elite black belts. You know, you're going mm -hmm. with good strikers, and then you have Greg tightening up my game and putting me through hell on fucking even on a ground and pound dummy, you know, bringing back the old school methods, you know, just train hard, hit hard, recover hard, and let's do it again. Definitely. Yeah. John Castaneda, man, his last fight, incredible performance, man. A lot of people counted him out in that one, man. He just dominated. Yeah. Shout out to Johnny Castaneda on that one, man. Good win. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. You know, you got a crew out there. Um, You know, you're, you're, you're thinking all violence, man, from, from some of the things you said earlier. That like, what what do you visualize, though, like the path for yourself in this fight coming up? Least resistance, you know. I uh, put these knuckles on his face and let's see what happens. You know, I got a 3-2 for him. I got some nice takedown defenses. I got some submissions mine in mine. And uh, we'll see how the ref pulls me off. You know, I don't right. see, I'm not going out there to have a bloody war. I just don't believe that guy's going to bring that out of me, you know? I think he's going to try and fucking hold me down for points. And I don't see that ever happening. Bloody wars. Is that something that you're past now? You know what I mean? Of course, if you need to do it, you're going to do it, but... Definitely, yes. I'm not at all... At all. Yes, I'm up, I'm up for all types, yes. But yeah. no, I don't with this one. For sure, for sure. Well, July 15th, man, UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas. Carl, thank you so much, man, for the time. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to see the – I don't want to say the real version of you, but, uh, you know, I think this is your real debut, to be honest with you, man. You, you're going to be prepared. You're ready. You know, you, you got that you got that heat on you right now. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I love it. I appreciate the time, man. Shout out to your podcast. Shout out to you, man. I appreciate you guys. and Everybody take care. Thank you to the Academy. Thank you to the UFC, Ruby Management. BC Organics, Garden of Life, Icon Meals, UFC PI, all you guys. Everybody take care. Bama P. Later. <laughs>